You know, Jesus spoke the language of his time. And the examples that he gave were examples that his people would have understand. He used talks about fishing and farming and, and, you know, and shepherding and things that the people would have understood. But most of us don't even remotely live physically the way they lived back then. So what would have been plain as day to Jesus' audience is very confusing to us. Take this line. No one who sets his hand to a plow and looks to what's left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. Well, plowing is done with very large tractors. In fact, on some of the big farms where they have 3,000 plus acres, the tractors have a GPS designed to keep the tractor driving exactly in a row. So everything looks perfectly the way it's supposed to be. But that's not exactly how they farmed in Jesus' day. They didn't have those tractors. They didn't have GPS. So how do they do it? Well, all done by hand and all done with animals. Today's first reading is about plowing. Elijah comes to call Elisha to be his successor. And where does he find Elisha? He finds Elisha plowing behind some oxen. Now Elisha and his whole clan, his enlarged family, they're basically what you would have called ancient teamsters. Because they owned all these oxen. They owned a lot of oxen. It's a 12 yoke of oxen. That's 24 oxen. So this is a lot of oxen, a lot of plows, and a lot of wagons. I'll get to that in a second. And what they would do, Elisha and his clan, they would take their oxen and plows in the planting season and travel along the Jordan Valley. And they'd offer their services to farmers because most farmers could not afford oxen. They would rather have a cow that would give milk all year than to have an ox that couldn't provide any food until you killed it. So they would hire, they would get together, the farmers in the village would get together, hire one of these, what I call them, teamster farmers, ancient teamster farmers to come along and take the plows and do all the plowing for them. And that's what's going on here. And then in the harvest season, Elisha's clan would return up the valley and offer to hire, to haul, want to do two things. One, collect their fee. Their fee would be paid in a percentage of the crops. And number two, to take the harvest to the city where they get a better price because they had the wagons and the oxen to do it. So it was a relationship they had with all the local farmers. Elisha's called to follow uh, uh, Elijah, and he sees Elisha farming. Now, I've, I've seen this in Peru, and I've seen this in Ethiopia. I go to very interesting places. But the reason I go to these third world places is because I get to experience things the, the way people live a lot closer to the time of Jesus. And in Ethiopia, I had a chance. I paid a farmer a couple of bucks. He let me do it. Try plowing behind his oxen. And, and when I did it, I understood what Jesus was talking about. This is what you do when you plow behind an oxen, a yoke of oxen, which is two oxen. The yoke, by the way, is, a, is, is the, is the uh, well, today it's, it's made out of metal, but back in Jesus' day it was made of wood. It hooked up the two animals by the back of their necks and their upper shoulders. Connect them. And in between the two animals would be the arm of the plow. And then you'd stand behind. But imagine you have the two ox in front of you hooked together by the yoke, and you're holding the, holding the plow. You're also holding the reins. The one end of the reins are in your hands, the same hands that you've gripped the handles of the plow with. The other end of the reins are hooked to the nose rings that are put on the noses of the oxen. And if you want to turn the oxen, you tug on the rein. It's got to be very uncomfortable. But the ox will turn in the direction that he's being tugged. And if he wants to go this way, that's how you get the oxen to turn around. That's the whole trick. Now, if you're trying to do a straight row, and you're too busy looking behind you for different reasons, seeing what's behind you, maybe you saw something, maybe you were distracted, maybe you just want to look at your own... The, the, the role that you're making. If you keep turning around like this, you'll be tugging on the reins. And the animal's going to go this way, the animal's going to go that way, and your role is going to look awful. It's not going to work. And when I saw it and experienced it, I said, ah, this makes perfect sense. No one who sets his hand at the plow and looks to what's left behind 
It's fit for the kingdom of God. What Jesus is telling you is, you said, what's past is past. Whatever you did wrong and you seek confession, it's forgiven. He wants people to think forward and not live in the past. He wants people to look at the direction that their lives, think of your life as the furrow that you're plowing. And the straighter you can make it, the better off you'll be. And by straighter, I mean straighter in the direction of the heavenly kingdom that we are all striving to attain. 